So let's talk about the cruise with your parents. Can we start there? This actually ties into porn. This is a really embarrassing story. But you said you wanted to talk about the darkness. I don't know if I've even, I probably have. I've got 400 episodes of my podcast. I was going to say, we sure. probably all told every story of our life. But this one hurts um, because I think this is when my wife uh, decided to leave me. Commercial break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Squarespace. <laughs> um, blue apron. Have you ever wanted a sprig of rosemary <laughs> in a tiny bag? Like yeah. a crime scene? Who killed this souffle? Sent to you with dry ice, like Vincent Price packed it. Vincent Price. Do you want a, a dinner one. for one shipped to you from Timbuktu <laughs> overnight for seventy nine fifty? You fucking asshole. Go to the market. Go to the market and buy a chicken. You shit. A pre-chopped <laughs> carrot in a Ziploc bag like a drug dealer sold you a carrot? Fuck oh, you. Shit. I got to do a bit about that. That's too funny. Anyway, I'll remember. I won't remember. Will you guys write that yeah, down for we'll, me? Yeah, we'll get you. that for you. That's too funny. That's how we work. Anyway, so... Where I, are you? Where are you going? You're on a cruise to where? I'm probably... So I got married 22, 3, 4, 5. I moved to New York when I was 25. I got best week ever when I was 26. So I was 26. I remember I had just gotten best week ever. And my parents, and I have all these like boundary issues. Um, I'm not, I hope I don't make anybody uncomfortable, but it, there was like a thing going on. My mom and I, almost like in an Italian or a South American way, she, we were each other's people. You know what I mean? Very, very close. I've seen crashing. Yeah. And that we turned down. Judd was like, that's too fucking weird. And I was like, I had to live it. And he was like, trust me, it's too weird. And you, that's downplayed? Well, on the show, she would sit on my lap and, and on the show, I would move her off. And I was like, I didn't move her off. Why would I move her off? She's my, she's my mama. It's fucked up, man. We didn't know. It's different. I mean, she didn't know either. Like neither of us, no one's malicious in this. But it was just, I always used to say she's European. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she, she's European. We kiss on the mouth and... It was never, it never, I'm being honest, I'd tell you if it did, it never felt romantic. It was just like, of course, this is my person. And um, that can be lovely. I'm sure some people are like, yeah, you love your mom. I love your mom. But that connection with your mom, not, I mean. Started to jeopardize my connection with other women. I'm sure. But what about, were you, and I don't mean kissing your dad on the mouth or anything, but were you as close? I did kiss my dad on the mouth. We were that family. And um, no, uh, my dad was the working, okay. powerful um so as as Joseph Campbell giver. would call him, he was the hairy helper. Okay. So he gave, we wanted for nothing. I got to go on mission trips and I got to go to college without, a, without any financial aid because of my dad. Uh, meanwhile, I'm straight up kicking it with my mom because their, their marriage wasn't great. And I uh, am an empath, so I would feel her pain a lot. So my brother's method was like, I'm going to go out and sort of party and make friends. And mine was, we can't leave. There's a crime scene here. Not, I don't mean literally a crime scene. I right. just mean emotionally, Mom somebody very help. fragile. Yeah. I'm going to hang out. The first chapter of my book is called Indoor Cat because I was an indoor cat. I just stayed at home because it calmed my mom down and I wanted that for her. But when you start dating, very psychologically strange. Uh, in fact, I'll go so far to say is um, you're supposed to sever that relationship around the age of seven <laughs> is, is when you're supposed to yeah. actively start being like, I have a daughter. You, you, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I'm going to be head over heels in love with her at a certain age. I believe around seven is when you have to verbally start telling them like, I want you to like be, go see other yeah. people. Go be your own person. <laughs> go see other people. Yeah. Yes. I'm your dad. I'm mm -hmm. here to help, but I'm not that. I'm the model for that. I'm your psychological model for that. Just as my mom is a psychological model for a, a wife as well. I know that people get uncomfortable with that, but that's where we learn love for good or bad. We learn it from watching our parents. So anyway. That is very true. It's fucked up. It's But people should be talking about yeah. fucked up shit. Like it's fucked up, but you learn it. That's it and yep. especially if you had traumatic parents, you learn some fucked up stuff too. Fucked so you gotta up. be, the answer is always more honesty. It's never less honesty. So I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a good thing I got from my mom. I learned that it's okay for me to be adored. Like it's okay to be special. It's okay to shine. Like she taught me all this very, very important stuff. So I didn't yet have any boundaries up. This is pre-therapy. 
This is actually why I started going to therapy. And at 26, you said, right? About Around 26 years okay. old is when I, I start, started going to my first therapist because of this cruise. The first mistake I made, which I would never do again, was I said, yes, my mom and my dad, so they don't get along. My mom is basically saying, will you come on this cruise with me? I, I don't want to be on this cruise with just your father. Again, nothing physical or abusive, just like they don't, yeah. it won't be that fun. Sure. Will you come with me? I look back essentially as my date. Would you be my platonic date? I want you to come to the dinners and we'll play games and we'll go to the casino. And that, you know, I'm sure I can't be sure, but the feeling was that she maybe had that kind of feeling. Like I'll bring Pete, it'll be more fun. And then my wife is basically like my plus one. This is my first wife. So the first mistake I made, I think, is going on the trip. <laughs> knowing that that was the dynamic. Right. Knowing I had only been married for four years. Um, and it was, you know, we're still babies. And I'm like, you know, my mom and dad want us to go on a cruise, be trapped in open water with them for days. There were sometimes just sailing days where you're just fucking sailing. So it was, it, it was real bad. It really, it was a pressure cooker of everything that was wrong that I was avoiding was here I am sitting between my, literally my mother and my wife. And psychologically, I'm like having to, who are you going to like choose? Choose. Yeah. Which is fucked up and weird. And I admit that this is weird. I'm 40 now. This was 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm watching this like you as if it happened to somebody else. <laughs> But my, my dick, as Eric Andre said, is inside my body right yeah, now. It's right. gone inside. So I just remember like it got really weird and gross. And like, I think, you know, she just saw the, the dysfunction there. There was nowhere to hide. And after that trip, she was like, you got to go to therapy. And it, it, it didn't even say like or else, but it felt like an or else. It felt like an or else for me. Mm -hmm. I remember I would like act out in weird ways. I think I ordered, like I went to the adult station and turned it on just to like, I was reverting to like a 12 year old. What would a 12 year old do? Well, I'd hang out with his mom. And then when I'm alone in the room, I'm like, I have porno. And my wife is like, what are you doing? Cause she was a more mature person. Right. <laughs> and she was showing how I had all this growing left to do. And then I did start seeing therapy. So again, my wife, my first wife helped in that regard. She was like, sure. you got to go to therapy. And I did. And that's when I learned about the Oedipal complex and all that stuff uh, and became a better person because of it. That's great. Yeah, it's fucking I mean, it's, weird. Well, it's deep that you could get that far now. That's, that's a lot of work you've done. I mean, I was 26 and I went pretty much as gross. But you're 14 years into that now. Yeah. And you're, you're able to see it. You're able to look back on it. You're able to discuss it. You're able to talk about the person you are now. I mean, a lot of people just... The answer is always more. No honest. pun intended is just keep on cruising. Dude, just ignore stay it. right there. I mean, I've seen other people you know, families similar to mine and they're still doing it. They're 40 and they're like, I'm going to Italy with my family. And right. I'm like, and I know they have families like mine and I'm like, it's, it, it's, so I'll tell you about me now. This is more self-serving, but it's important. I've gone to a lot of therapy. My mom doesn't sit on my lap anymore. We don't, did you have to tell her not yeah, to straight? How, how was that? How was that conversation? It was blunt. Was it hurtful for your mom? Yeah. How it was, was, a how was very, it for you, though? Were you in a place at that point? Because you'd already been in therapy. I went to therapy. It's, it's right. almost unfair. We should have gone to couples therapy. <laughs> <laughs> so they're there. You probably should. So they're there like, oh, I see. But instead, my mom just got this like boundaryful new son coming home. She sits on my lap and I go, don't sit on my lap. And she goes, why? And I go, it makes me uncomfortable. You but know? did it? Yes. Even, even prior to therapy? Or yes, you, in a way that I didn't, I didn't, my brother knew it first. And so there was not that same at all with your brother. He had boundaries, he, but he also was like sexually activated at a younger age. So you start going like, you don't right. want your mom yeah. sitting on your yeah. lap after you're having sex. But I had sex so late that these like tracks had been laid. Um, so you say. So I started being very, very blunt with her. And almost, I don't want to say I was unkind, but I will say I could have done better. But I didn't know, I didn't know what else to do. I went in sort of guns blazing. Like when I said I didn't want to go to church anymore, she was like, why? And I was like, because I hate it. Like I was kind of funny about it. 
She's like, I don't, I, and I would be like, I don't want to call you every Sunday. I just want to call you when I call you. I was like, can't I just call you when I call you? And if you miss me, can't you call me? I didn't like that Pete calls on Sunday thing. Right. I know that works for some people, but it was just like infringing on my identity a little too much that I would be on a vacation with a girlfriend and be like, it's Sunday. I got to yeah. step out and call my mom. It's a standing date. And then like when I would go home, it's a standing date. Mm -hmm. You're right. And when I'd go home, I would stay at home. And my mom would wake me up as she always did by bursting in without knocking, singing a song and climbing on, not in, but on the bed with me. And it's just like, I'm sorry, I'm not, I know you see me as an eight year old. I'm not, I'm 25 at this point and I'm gonna get a hotel. She's like, why not? And I still get a hotel. I was just talking to somebody about this recently. I was like, it's hard. I started to realize that the, the exterior world has an influence obviously mm -hmm. on here. I just mean symbolically. It's like, yeah, I probably could stay at home, you know, now and just be like, don't wake me up like that. Sure, but there's something about another area. It's metaphoric. It says like, yeah, I'm from here, but I'm gonna go here mm -hmm. and I'm gonna get room service and I'm gonna watch the movie that I want. I'm not gonna watch it on three, the volume three. <laughs> Cause you're asleep upstairs. Because All right. I'm, like that's my therapist, like kind of really coached me into saying like, it's okay to be a grown ass man or woman. Like I would talk about that girlfriend who would yell at me mm -hmm. and he'd just go, you have a credit card? I was like, yeah. He's like, you have a car? He's like, yeah. Get a hotel. He, he was like, go to the four seasons. This is when I started making uh, some money from the mm -hmm. TV show. He's like, Pete, go to the four seasons. Stay in a suite for the weekend. You don't even tell her where you're going. If someone is abusing you and yelling at you and scaring you, just be like, yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. Turn your phone off and go to a hotel. That, that was something I needed to be told wasn't selfish or wrong right. or inappropriate. So that, uh, I did that with my mother, who we, we have a much better relationship now. Yeah, that's what I want to say. There's so when zero you... chance she'll <laughs> see this, but I do want to say <laughs> we got through that. And now, but we that can... had to take work. I'm sure that's a huge change for your mom. The moment you say, "Don't sit on my lap anymore." Yeah, she think I think she thinks I'm crazy, but it doesn't matter. I don't care what she thinks. Does she love you? Yeah, and you love her, and I love her very much. That's it. And we have a lot of. There's a lot of landmines still, and it won't because she wants it to be. This is sad, but she wants it to be what it was, and I have to just be like, it's not going to be that anymore. Do you? Not in the way that it was. Can't right. I say to her all the time, I go, I go, I don't have a family. I have a situation. <laughs> yeah. And I go, can't you just be my mom? Right. Because she comes and she'll complain about my dad. And I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to be your therapist. Mm -hmm. Or then she'll do this. And I go, I don't, I don't want to be your partner. I don't want to be your gossip buddy. Can't you just be my mom? Can't we hang out? Can't, I, we'll go get ice cream. I'm yeah. a good son. You want to go to the movies? You want to go to dinner? You want to see the baby? This, that, that. There's all these things available to you, but I was her confidant so much of our lives. It was me and her together. The movie Ex Machina, do you know the movie yeah. Ex Machina? Yeah, oh yeah. In the movie Ex Machina, I'm the robot. Okay. And she's the boy, and my dad is Oscar Isaac. Okay. So he's the sort of genius, and he's, he's you know doing his own thing and kind of being mysterious and angry. And the boy comes to visit me in the cell, and we bond really hard, right? And, and I sort of use that relationship to get myself out because it wasn't a great situation. And then what sucks is the boy is left in the house. That's what's going on. Right. It's like, you want to go like, mom, I, I wish I could set you up with some new guy or whatever, whatever it was. Whatever I don't even know if that, it, what, what, right. what it is, by the way, I think they're going to be together and I think they want to be together, but it's like, I don't know what it is, but it can't be me because I have to, I have to be this. Yeah. I look at the photos and I'm and like, I'm not this anymore. Now. And then you have a kid and you're like, my identity as, again, I don't mean to be, you know, gender normative here, but like as, as, a, as a man or just as a, a decisive, independent human with agency, regardless of whatever genitals you have, that it matters how I set up the parameters yes. of my physical outward relationships for you for me yeah